Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. I am finally back in Montreal um, and happy to be home for a few uh, days at least. So um, what I wanted to do this week was I wanted to talk a little bit about how to rig a head. And um, I so I'm, I'm taking kind of what I went over in that eyeball rig a while back and I'm going to be expanding that concept out to what I'm going to talk about today with the head. So um, I'm going to try and do this as a quick tip. So I might have to split this up into a couple of different segments, one for this week and one for next week. Uh, but I'll do my best to go through it as simply as possible. So I've, I'm doing this here in Animate Pro just to show that you can do it with Animate Pro, but you can do it in Animate Pro or Harmony. Um, it's not possible to do these types of complex rigs in Animate uh, because it's just too far uh, from what you can, get, you can accomplish there. So um, what I did was I prepared some artwork and so I basically just um, cut apart a head. So I've got one layer there for the face. Let's check out in the drawing view to isolate that layer on its own. So I've got one layer for the face or for the head. I've got the eyeball and I label things with front and back because if you ever swap the head horizontally, um, if you do label with left and right, when you flip horizontally, the left and right will be reversed. If you label things front and back, even if you flip, front is always going to be front. So it makes much more sense to go front and back. So I've got the front eye, front pupil, back eye, back pupil, nose, mouth, eyebrows, hairline, and then I've got a few curls on the hair, and I've got an ear. And then I've more or less kind of laid these out where I want them to be in space, but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to do my real ordering over in the network view. So the first step here to do is to actually uh, put pegs on all of those drawings. So I selected all the drawings and I hit that add peg button. And the reason that add peg button is nice is because it will not only add the peg layers but it will label them accordingly. So that now I'll be able to go in my network view and I'll be able to see very easily what's going on here. Now of course when you first pop in here um, things are a lot messy so it would be nice to be able to reorder the timeline. So I can go to Windows Toolbars and Network View and from here I will select the last network or the last node in my network which is usually either display or the right node or both of them are in the same spot for your default scene and then you can click on the button for order network up it's the one with the up arrow and then what that does is it goes up the network and it orders these things for you automatically so that you can get in there and quite easily be able to um, order those things so now from here what I want to be able to do is I want to rig these so that I can move all the facial features together and um, let's just do that first because that's going to be the easiest thing to track first. And you can hit Control P or Command P to add a peg. And now from here, what I'll do is I'll attach this peg to all of my facial features. So the eyebrows, the mouth, the nose, the pupils, and the eyes, but not the face. So now, if I use my transform tool, I can select all those facial features together. I prefer to leave the ear out of that group uh, because I like to manually adjust the ear. If you want to have the ear in there though, you can go ahead and do that. But the most important thing is that you have a peg that you can use to control the position of those facial features. And that way, when you have those facial features kind of more in the center, particularly when my eyes are in the center, then it looks more like a front view. And particularly when you have a, f a head that's a little bit more round in shape, this works better. So you, you would probably actually, in addition to moving the feature, facial features as a whole to the center, you'd also want to move the eyes further apart, and that's how you get your front view. And you may want to have a drawing swap for the nose as well, which you can do. But the main point here is that we want to be able to move those facial features together as a group. And we always want to label things so that we understand what they are when we're animating. So you can click on that yellow options box there and it'll pop up the layer property so you can say facial features and I always like to leave that peg on the end so that I know what it is. So from here now what I really want to be able to do is I want to be able to cut off all of those facial features with the edge of the face. Um, but before I get there I'll just do a couple other rigging things. I want the eye 
um, to be a parent of the pupil. So I'll just make that connection there so I can move that eye together. Do the same thing with the front eye. I'll make the eye the parent of the pupil so I can move those together. Now on those pupils and the eyes, I'll just really quickly redo what I did in that um, eye tutorial, but I'm doing a simplified version here. So I'll have a cutter, and in the cutter, I want um, the pupil is the thing that's being cut out, so I'm going to cut the pupil out there. And you can slide an effect in there. If as you drag, if you hold down Alt, it will let you slide an effect in. So I can slide that in there. And then I want the eye to be the mask. So I can plug a copy of the eye into the left-hand side. And then I'll take that cutter and I will invert the cutter. Now in most cases, you also want to be able to isolate just the white of the eye. In this case, I don't have an iris. I just have a black pupil. So it doesn't matter if the black pupil is on top of the black line because they're both the same color and I can't see. But if you do have an iris, then you would also want to have a color override here that you would use to isolate the white of the eye. For simplicity's sake, because I don't need it in my example, I am just going to leave that out. But we'll come back to that concept when we look at how we're going to rig the rest of the face. So let's do the same thing here with the other eye. I will have the pupil is the thing that's being cut out. I want a copy of the eye going into the left side of the cutter, and then I'm going to invert that cutter. So now I can animate those pupils around the eye, and they'll be very nicely contained. And I can take those eye groups, and I can move the eye groups around to, to manipulate the eyes. And, you know, I apologize for the bad artwork. I just um, prepared the artwork a little bit quickly here, but I wanted to really get to the meat of what I wanted to talk to you guys about, which is why I didn't want to spend too, too much time talking about the artwork. So now at this point, what I want to be able to do is I want to take those facial features and I want to cut most of them off with the edge of the face, but not all of them. So whenever you want to group together things that you want to, you know, uh, act as, as, as a certain thing, this is what you use a composite for. So far, I mean, I just have a composite that's at the end of my entire scene here, or my entire, you know, group of my character, but you can add another composite and you can use that composite to group certain elements together. So I'll just connect this composite to my first composite so that whatever I connect here isn't going to disappear from my camera view. Otherwise, because the camera view is showing what you see at the display there, and the display is connected to this composite. So if my first composite's not connected to this composite, then if I start adding things or I move things from that composite into the other, you see it disappear. But now, if I connect that composite down to the main composite, it reappears because the eyebrow is still going down eventually to that composite. So I'm just going to take these elements that I want to cut off with the, facial, um, with the edge of the face, and I'm going to connect them in here. Note with the nose, I don't want to cut the nose off because I want the nose in front. So I'm not going to connect the nose here. I'll just continue on with the eyes and the other two eyes. Whoops, it looks like I uh, did something with my connection there because I lost uh, my pupil. So what did I do? Oops, I stuck it behind. Scooch it up in front. Remember, the left is in front and the right is behind. So just maintain the ordering the way that you have it there. So now what I've got is I've got these facial features grouped together and I've also got grouped together in the composite and you can see that they're highlighted in blue here. When I select the composite it highlights them in blue and I can see that I've got gathered together all of the facial features except for the nose. So now what I'm going to do is exactly the same thing that I did with the eye. I'll take a cutter module and I'll plug into my cutter module the composite. So in other words all of the drawings that exist in that composite. And I'll plug into the left side of that cutter a copy of the face. Now remember, just like with the eyeball, you've got to invert that so that everything gets cut off there um, inside, not outside. So now if I select that facial features peg and I start to animate these things to the side, do you see that I can actually animate these directly off the edge of that face? Now, the one thing that you want to be aware of, um, and you see that the nose stays out of that. Uh, one thing that you want to be aware of, though, is that you do want to select just, you want to keep that line there. So you want to select just the um, skin, just the skin tone. So because of that, 
you want to add that color override here in between the, the face and the cutter because the face consists of both the, the black line there and the skin inside but I only want to use the skin inside to cut those facial features with. So I can take my color override and on my color override I'll nip this guy in there then what this allows me to do is I can take one of those colors, it shows all the colors that are connected there and I'll take this and it makes sense actually it makes a lot more sense if you label your colors I definitely recommend labeling your color, it's going to make it a lot easier because sometimes you might have two colors that look the same but they're different things so really really go ahead and label your colors but because I didn't I'll just drag that one in there and then you do need to check the checkbox to render selected colors only